What matters to each of us is not merely how long we live, how healthy we are, but how well our lives go, whether we're happy, whether we're able to set our own goals and achieve them, whether we're able to have deep and substantial personal relationships with other human beings, just to mention a few elements. That is what matters, is well-being. Now, genes not only affect our health, they affect our capacity for well-being and our capacity to promote the well-being of other people through moral behaviour. And nature doesn't allocate genes equally. In extreme cases, people are born with extremely short, painful lives through genetic disorders. But in lesser degrees, some genes can cause disadvantages and disabilities. Rational evolution is the use of science to shape our genes to achieve our values, like our capacity to improve well-being. We can use gene editing and genetic selection to give the next generation a better opportunity of a better life, both for themselves and for other people. We already appeal to well-being when we use social institutions like education, uh, like laws or norms of reciprocity to promote people's well-being. We even use biological interventions already. Adding iodine to salt adds 10 to 15 IQ points to the next generation. Good diet promotes cognitive development. And Ritalin is used to improve attention and concentration and reduce impulsive violence. Um, there's no difference between environmental interventions and biological interventions, and there's no difference between drugs in principle and genetic interventions apart from their risks. We already use uh, our knowledge of how to protect the capacities necessary for well-being to remove threats to them. So, for example, lead was removed from paint and petrol because it reduces IQ, because IQ is valuable. We already use our genetic knowledge to select the next generation through what's called liberal eugenics, when we enable people to avoid genetic disorders like cystic fibrosis, thalassemia or Down syndrome. Parents should be allowed to access this technology to have children with better prospects of better lives, provided they don't harm their children or other people. Now, some people worry that this is going to reduce genetic diversity. But not all diversity is good. Psychopaths are a part of diversity. We should use gene editing to try to eliminate psychopaths. And while we did need genetic diversity to survive epidemics like HIV or corona in the past, now we have science to generate preventative strategies like the use of condoms or vaccination or treatments like antiretroviral drugs. We now no longer are requiring the sort of genetic diversity that humanity required for most of its history. The opportunities are enormous. We may have IQs vastly greater than humans currently have today. We may no longer be the same species. Genes could be transferred from non-human animals to humans to provide them with bat sonar, hawk-like vision, enhanced memory, or even radical life extension. Uh, and the Methuselah mouse is a genetically engineered mouse that lives twice as long. We could do the same thing in humans. Should we? We need ethical principles like the promotion of well-being to guide us. Science can tell us how we can achieve things, but ethics can tell us whether we should. And the promotion of well-being is the central ethical principle. Thank you.